couch Dogs need the lesson Hey there, Lickin' Riffers, how are you doing? Welcome to another awesome lesson right here on Lickin' Riff in which we're gonna dispel the mystery around guitar scales and modes. And I'm gonna show you the most intuitive, easiest way of learning, understanding, hearing, and playing guitar modes uh, without much effort. And the way we're gonna do it is to go completely the wrong way about it because uh, the right way to learn scales and modes is supposed to be through theory. But that's a huge source of confusion and frustration for most players because how are you supposed to understand the theory behind the modes? How are you supposed to calculate the modes and which note is out of place inside the scale if you're not yet used to them? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get you used to the modes first and then you'll be able to understand them better because you're gonna be able to hear them. Each mode has a very distinct sound. And uh, even when we're talking about the minor and major scales, those are also modes. Um, and that's the important thing to understand here. Modes are basically just minor and major scales and each mode has one note out of place. The Locrian mode has two notes out of place and we're gonna leave that to the end of the lesson. So um, the way I suggest learning and memorizing the scales first is uh, to use the good old pentatonic scale as our basis. Now bear with me here. Um, I know that the pentatonic scale tends to box people into itself and then it's hard to get out of it, but if you use the pentatonic scale as a basis, because it's really, uh, it's really easy to understand, this concept and memorize that shape. Okay, you probably have it memorized already. Um, so we'll start from that and then we'll add the missing notes into it and then we'll start moving them around and see what we get. So um, the pentatonic scale can be both a minor pentatonic scale and a major pentatonic scale. For example, if we're playing it on five and we have eight, five, eight, five, seven, five, seven, five, seven, five, eight, five, then we have an A minor pentatonic. Okay? But if we want an A major pentatonic, then all we have to do is take the five and have it as our second note, meaning we go down three frets and start from there. So the five is our second note. So we have two five on the sixth string. Okay, you can start from five and then go down. So it's five, two, four, two, four, two, four, two, five, two, five. And that's the major pentatonic, the A major pentatonic. So five. See? Okay, that means that this is also a major scale somehow, right? The second note of the scale is uh, the major key. So this, the A minor pentatonic scale, is also the C major pentatonic scale. Okay, see? And the A major pentatonic scale is also the F sharp minor pentatonic scale. Okay? So each pentatonic scale is actually two scales. It's a minor and a major. And that's the important thing to understand about any scale. And that's the key to understanding what we're gonna do here. Because we can move the same shape three frets down or up and get its minor or major equivalent. And that will help us memorize the modes. So again, we have a minor pentatonic on five. And we have a major pentatonic with five as its second note if we start on two. Okay, but we can start on five. Okay, we can start with the root note. Okay, but most people would prefer starting with two. 
may just remember that this note is actually the root for the equivalent relative minor scale. Okay, so that's for the pentatonic. Okay, so you probably know this scale already, um, this shape. So this is actually missing two notes. And if we want to play the full major or minor scale, we need to add okay, seven on the E string, so we get eight, seven, five. Six on the B string, so we get eight, six, five. Okay, so we get and four on the third string, so we get seven, five, four. Okay, we also have eight on the fifth string, so we have eight, seven, five. And the same note uh, we added on the E string adds itself on the E bass string, so seven on the sixth string as well, so eight, seven, five. Okay, so we added two notes, okay, in different octaves. So it's seven and six on strings one and two, four on the third string, and eight and seven on strings five and six. This, okay, this is the same note as this, an octave apart, and this is the same note as this, two octaves apart. One octave apart is the four. So, okay, these are the notes we add. So you practice this and you have the full minor scale. And, and so. And now get used to this. If you take this three frets down, you have the A major scale. Exactly the same shape. Okay, so. Sounds major, right? Hey, yeah, listen to it. A minor. This is also F sharp minor and C major. Okay, and F sharp minor. Okay, so you see how by adding the missing notes you get the complete scale, you get the full scale. So practice this, okay? If you need to practice this, stop the video and, and practice this because you need to learn to hear the difference between minor and major. Okay, and you don't have to run over the scale all the time. You can create music right away with it. Just play the notes out of sequence. To get the minor scale sound. Then do the same thing with the major scale. Okay? Just invent your own little melodies out of it. Um, just make sure you keep a good rhythmic sense and if you have a nice groove then the music will practically create itself as long as you just use the scale notes. Trust me, it works. Um, and that way you'll also make your first steps uh, in improvisation, which you might enjoy and like. And I have a full playlist for it, uh, a soloing and improvisation playlist if you like. So um, it's highly recommended. That way you train your ear as well as your fingers. So um, once you have your major and minor scales, all you need to do to hear the modes uh, is to get notes 
out of place. And the great thing about the guitar is that if you move the shape, you get an equivalent scale. So for example, if we have the Dorian mode, it's equivalent, three frets down would be the Lydian mode. You don't even have to relearn a shape. You just use the, sh the same shape instead of a, on a minor scale, you use it on a major scale. So let's do that. To get the Dorian, okay, it's a minor scale. So you need the A minor. Okay, key. Okay, the A minor scale notes. Just move the six to seven, okay, on the second string and then you get the Dorian scale. Okay, let's hear that. Okay, I know we need to move the lower notes as well, but let's wait with that, okay? Let's learn to hear the slight difference. Okay, instead of, you have, Suddenly, you have a major sound instead of the minor sound. Okay, you have this. Okay, and blues. And that creates this. Okay, you have A minor. And instead of D minor, which is the natural uh, D chord in the scale, you have D major, okay? Which creates a hopeful, optimistic sort of sound, okay? So if we want to move the lower note, then instead of eight on the fifth string, we'll play four on the third, which is the octave of this. So. And you get the Dorian scale. So again, play around with that. Okay? And if you like, just put an A minor D van in the background if you have a looping device. you get one note out of place and it's still a minor scale but it's now a Dorian scale. Let's take this three frets down and we'll have a Lydian. Okay, because this is the note we're moving. Instead of and instead of three on the second string, okay, we have four on the second string. And now we have this, exactly the same shape. Let's start from A, okay, so we can hear the major sound. Okay, instead of this, we have A1 on the third string now. the Lydian scale and you'll see the difference between okay, a normal major sound and a Lydian sound. Now 
After you're done with the Dorian and the Lydian, you'll want to try the Phrygian and the Mixolydian. Let's go back to the original shape. Hey, this one. Okay. You'll want to take the 7 on the E string down to 6, and then you'll have this. Okay. Now this might immediately sound familiar, it might sound Spanish to you, and that's right, because in Spanish music, you have the Phrygian scale. Okay, so that's probably the easiest one to recognize right away. And because we move the 7, we need to move the 4 as well, so instead of 4 on the 3rd string, we'll play 8 on the 4th. So... So, you also have the 6 on the 6th string. Because if you move the 7 to 6 on the E, the high E string, you have the same on the low string. So you have 8. Okay. This is the Phrygian scale, and it might sound immediately familiar, as I said. Okay. Same thing, three frets down, is the Mixolydian scale. The Mixolydian gives you A7. Because you move, okay, you move this, the major 7, down to a minor 7, and this gives you the, the tension chord, you know, the basis to all tension and dominant chords, the 7th chord, okay, A7. So that's the Mixolydian scale. Okay, so let's... Okay, now you might be hearing the minor still, so start from A, don't start from F sharp. Okay? Okay, it has a different ending. Instead of... Instead of... Uh, Pleasant ending, you have a strong ending because that's the seventh. Get used to the sound with the chord. covered most of the modes. Now, you know the uh, blues pentatonic scale, I hope. If not, this is it. Okay, using the flat five. It's the pentatonic scale, adding the eight on the third string. Okay, it's eight, five, seven. And also, Six on the fifth, so it's seven six five. Okay, and that's okay. This is the flat five. Okay, and this um, 
is also a sound you need to know. So if you don't know it, know it. It's one of the most important sounds uh, in, in modern music, the flat five. So add it to the pentatonic first. And then we'll add it to the Locrian scale. The Locrian scale is the Phrygian scale with a flat five. Okay, so you're uh, actually taking uh, two notes out of place. So you get this, okay? Listen to it, it's a little bit weird, right? Okay, the Phrygian. Right? Instead of this, you get this. Okay, you don't play both of them. I did it on purpose. Okay, so the note is this. Okay? And then you get this. Okay, the flat five. The flat two. Okay, the flat two is in the friggin. Okay, it's a strange scale. Okay, and this kind of corresponds with the minor seven flat five chord. Okay, the half diminished chord. Okay, because this has the flat five. Okay, it's in the name, minor seven, flat five. Okay, it has the flat five. Okay, so that's why the, the, the scale sounds weird because it corresponds with a half diminished chord. Um, so we have the six on the, the E string, just like in the Friggin scale, also on the E bass string, and also the eight on the fourth string, okay? But now we have six on the fifth string as well, and we have eight on the third string instead of five on the second, so we get this. string instead of the natural four on the third string so okay six on the fifth and two on the sixth now most chances are you won't ever have to play the Locrian scale okay now all the rest of the modes have a very distinct sound, a very, um, a very strong characteristic, a very strong character. The Locrian uh, mode is a jumble of notes. That's what it feels like at first. So again, take your time, scale by scale, okay? And shape by shape. Hear the, learn to hear the, the characteristics, learn to, to hear the difference between the minor and the major to first add the notes and then take one note out of place for each respective mode, learn to hear it and play around with it. And um, hopefully this solves some of your uh, modal problems uh, in getting to know the sound. And what about the rest of the neck, you, you ask? Um, after you learn to hear the scales, to hear the, the characteristics of each scale, the colors of each scale, the, the change you know, in each scale. After you learn to hear the colors, it's actually really easy to find it around the neck because if you know the minor scale all over the neck, then you already know that you can transpose it three frets down for the major. If you have uh, the major, then you can transpose it three frets up for the minor. And then you just hear which note to move. And I know what some of you are saying. Yeah, right, I will hear what note to move. But that's how it works. If you hear this, then you'll know when this note comes up, okay? If you learn to recognize the Lydian note. And if you hear the Mixolydian note, you know, the seventh note, it's actually pretty easy to find it around the neck. It's the seventh of the, the, the key, okay? It's, it's a dominant seven. It's not called a dominant for nothing. It's dominant. It's a dominant sound, so you can find it anywhere. 
Um, so that's, uh, that's your lesson. So thank you for watching and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. There's a ton of lessons already here and I upload regularly. So come join the Lake and Ref community. Everything is for free, of course, completely for free. Uh, but if you want to give something back anyway and help around with making these lessons, making your guitar education, then you can use uh, the link in the description and go to the Patreon page and pledge whatever it is you want to give back. And I thank you in advance for your generosity. Or you can donate a one-time donation uh, via the donation button on the Lick and Riff website. Uh, either way is fine, and I thank you in advance. And uh, thank you very much for watching. Bye, enjoy.